Okay, continuing on today with the Laplace transform playlist, we're going to do some examples of inverse Laplace transforms. I'll provide a link in the description to the quiz I'm going to use, but if you want to navigate in here from the web page, from the main page, you just go to differential equations page. In here, we also have the Laplace transform quiz, and we have the Laplace transform cheat sheet, which we'll use. So I'll open that over here. You can use this very helpful for inverse Laplace transforms. But for a quiz, what we want to work on today is the inverse Laplace 101 quiz. So let's check that out now. Okay, now for these problems I'm going to do, I'm going to go a little quicker because we've done two videos on the inverse Laplace transforms and we've gone over some of the basics. So now we're just going to kind of get into it. So for this next problem, what we're going to want to look at is we want to look at the inverse Laplace that we have over here and it's of four over S squared. What I like to do is we can always factor out the constant. So sometimes I like to just, you could try to work with it, but I like to kind of just factor it out and we'll deal with this as one over S squared. Now this is clearly looks like it's in the form where we could use the formula for the Laplace transform of T to the N when N is an integer. The formula for that's going to be N factorial over S to the N plus one. Well, equating to the exponent here, we have a two. So we're saying our N value needs to be one. So we're saying the Laplace transform of t to the one or just t, that's going to be when n is one, we just get one factorial or one over s squared. And again, the inverse Laplace is just reversing the Laplace transform. So we have the same thing here, one over s squared, one over s squared. We go back, we'll take this f of t value, which is just t. And so for our solution for this one should be just four over t. Let me check that. Good, we got it right. Okay, going on to the next problem. Okay, this one's a little more interesting. We've got the Laplace, tran the inverse Laplace transform of four over s to the one half or square root of s. I'll write it as s to the one half right now because this is gonna be actually the same formula, but it's non-integer case. So it's similar to what we just did, but non-integer. So again, I'll factor, I'll factor the four out of this. So we'll just write this as well, that's a terrible bracket, but we'll just keep going. So that's going to be one over S to the one half there. And let's take a look at that same formula. Well, just a slate, we'll just do this a little differently. So our Laplace of T to the N, we won't use the factorial for a non-integer case. We'll write this as gamma of N plus one over S to the N plus one. So if our exponent here is one half, then here, this means our N value needs to be minus one half. So let's just be clear about what's happening. We're looking at the Laplace of t to the minus one half. And then with our formula, this is gonna be just gamma of one half over s to the one half. But for gamma of one half, what we do, what I usually do is just memorize this one value and that's gonna be square root of pi. And so this is gonna be all over s to the one half. So then coming back up here to our problem, we don't have square root of pi here, we have one. But what I can do, square root of pi is a constant value, so I can create it. Just enter in a square root of pi here. But I don't want to change it, so we'll need to divide by square root of pi here. So let me just get a little more space to finish this off. So what do we have? So I think what we can do is go to our solution. So we still have 4 over square root of pi in front. And again, just doing this, remember we were dealing here with t to the minus 1 half. So reversing that Laplace transform, this is going to be just t to the minus 1 half t to the minus one half is one over square root of t. So I can actually write this as four over square root of t times pi, kind of consolidating everything. So let's come over here and see if that's one of the solutions. So they have it still with, so this looks a little different, but this is the same thing right here. This is the same as our top answer. So let's check it and that's correct. Okay, this looks pretty good. So we got the inverse Laplace transform four over s squared plus 12s plus 37. And I think what I want to do, I think what I will do here is try to consolidate a step. So let's factor a four up for the first step. But when I do that, we'll have a one in the numerator. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to complete the square on the denominator. So I can write this as s plus six squared. So that's going to be s squared plus 30. So squaring that out, we get s squared plus 12s plus 36, but we have a 37 here. So I just need to add one. Now at this point, this is looking pretty similar to the Laplace transform of sine of t. The only problem is we're shifted here. 
This Laplace transform of sine of t is going to be just s squared plus 1 with a 1 in the numerator. So to get this shift, this is going to be a shift of minus 6. So what I can do is, what if I just did e to minus st here? The reason it works is we have this formula for the Laplace of eat times f of t is going to be the same thing as big F s minus a. So it's going to give us a shifted Laplace transform. And see with the minus with the minus six shift here, if you have s minus a, s minus minus six is going to be the same thing as this s plus six. So for this, what we're going to have, we're going to have a four up front, and then this is going to become sine t e minus six t. Let's circle it and check the answer. So we come over here, and yep, that's correct. Okay, this one looks pretty interesting. Laplace inverse two s minus one over two s squared plus sixteen. I think I don't really want two coefficients here, I think that's not going to help me. So what if I factor, if I factor a two out of the numerator and two out of the denominator, I'm just factoring out one. So let's see how this is going to look if I just rewrite it that way. We'll have, this will become an S, and then factoring out a two here, this is going to become one half, just dividing everything by two. So then we're going to have here S squared plus eight in the denominator. But then from here, what I can do, because we've got this minus sign, I can split this into two inverse Laplace transforms. The first one we'll write as s over s squared plus I'm going to write 8 as square root of 8 squared, just kind of setting myself up. And then for this next one, what I'll do is I'll take this minus 1 half up front. I can factor out a constant value. And this one's going to become Laplace inverse of 1 over s squared. And again, I'll write this as square root of 8 squared. But now for this one, this is actually going to just be a formula. This is going to be our formula for cosine. This is going to be cosine square root of 8t. Then for this next part, okay, we'll bring over this minus 1 half. Now this thing, this thing's not quite set up the way we want it. It's almost sine. So let's just look at this. Our formula for the Laplace transform, sine at is going to be a over s squared plus a squared. We're saying our a value here is square root of 8. So what I'll do is create, that's, that's messy, but I'm going to create a square root of 8 there in the numerator, and then we'll create it. We don't want to change it, so we'll create a square root of 8 here. So bring all that down. This will become 1 over square root of 8. I'll probably do a little simplification at the end, but now, now this whole thing is going to be just sine square root of 8t. Okay, now for 1 over 2 square root of 8, Let's see, I can write square root of 8 as 2 square root of 2. I don't know if this helps me. Then let's, let's rationalize the square root of 2. We'll go down this rabbit hole. And so then, so I think doing all that, we end up with square root of 2 over 8 here. Okay, so quick rewrite. This is going to become cosine square root of 8t minus square root of 2 over 8 sine square root of 8t. Put a plus c, and that's it. Okay, no plus c. But now we'll go over here and we'll check our answer. So it looks like this one. Um, yeah, just notice they wrote the square root of 8 as 2 square root of t here, but same thing. So we'll check it, and that's correct. Okay, for this one, this is actually an easy one because this we can do almost completely by formula. What I'll do is I'm going to rewrite it. I'm just going to factor the minus 5 up front. So this becomes s over s squared minus 4. But this is almost exactly our formula for the Laplace transform. That's a pretty good L I just did there. I'm really proud of myself. I don't even know how I did that. Anyway, so our formula for, s no, sorry. So our formula for cosh of AT, poor mix of colors, but we'll just keep going. So then the formula for this is going to be S over S squared minus A squared. So then what we have here, we just have our A value as 2. So this is going to be minus 5 times cosh of 2t. Let's check that answer. That's correct. Okay, this one's pretty easy, but I still like kind of doing it anyway. So what I'll do for this is, here, let's just write it first. 7 over 3, 3s plus 1. What I'll do is factor out the constant value, so I can actually factor, what if I factor out 7 over 3 from this? So then we have our inverse for Laplace. We'll have 1 here. This becomes just s. I want to do that to set up the formula. But then in order for this 1 to be correct, we need to have this be 1 third because we're factoring a 3 out of it. Then what I want to do on this, we just want to use 
our formula for E A T. This is one over S minus A. So coming back here to have that be one third, we need the A value equal to minus one third. And so for our solution on this, we're just gonna have seven over three E minus one third T. And let's check it. Yep, this one right here. That's correct. Okay, this one's interesting. We have got the inverse Laplace of four E minus four S plus four. Whenever I see one like this, I have to kind of stop myself because we have two formulas we want to look at. The first one we'll look at is for, let's say, the unit step function. Just a quick review from a few videos back. The formula we found for this was E minus CS times F of S, the function, this function unshifted. So that's our formula for a function times the unit step function. And then let's just look at what about the formula for the Dirac delta function? So if we have f of t times the Dirac delta function shifted, we'll say by the same c value, this is going to have this same e minus, this, this part of it's exactly the same, but then we have, instead of the Laplace transform of the function, we have just the function evaluated at c. So then coming back to our problem, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtly rewrite this. I think I will factor, yeah, let's factor the 4 in front of this. And then what I'll do, because we have, we're have we adding exponent, e to the minus 4, s plus 4, I can split up and write it as multiplication. I can write it like this. And that should make it more clear because now we can kind of see what we have here on the S, but coming back to our formula, notice we have the C value in that spot. So regardless of what, regardless of which case we're using, we know we want our C to be four. And so the question is this other part, is this some function evaluated at a point or is this a Laplace transform? Well, the giveaway is there's no S here. So it's really hard to have a function in S with no S. So I'm gonna go with this second case. I'm gonna say it's gonna be Dirac Delta function evaluated at four. So then we're saying here that we're saying this is our f of c, or this is f of 4. Well, in order for f of 4 to be e to the 4th, then f of t is just going to be e to the t. So then for putting, so then putting all this together for our solution, we're going to have 4. Then we're going to have, then we're going to come back our functions in here. So we're going to have, this is going to be Dirac delta of t minus 4. And the function, this f of t, is just going to be this e to the t. So we'll circle that and check it. And that's correct. Okay, this is good. We've got a similar problem here. And what I'm going to do with this one, I will, yeah, I think I will just factor this minus three out just because I like to do that. So we'll, we'll take out the minus three here. And then we're just looking at one over S. I'll keep it separated. One over S, E minus two S. And we'll do something really similar to what we did last time. We'll just notice the coefficient there on the exponent. And using this, coming back to our formula, that means this told us that our C value needs to be two. So then we look at the other part. And the question again, is this some function evaluated at C? Uh, no, it can't be, we still have the S in there. This is actually gonna be a function evaluated at S. This is gonna be this first case, the unit step function. So we're saying we have part of it right here that we want the unit step function evaluated at two. We need this thing to be our F of S. This is actually one of the first things we did we, when we looked at, we had, I think the first video was the Laplace transform of one, and that's just one over S. So one is gonna be our F of T there. So putting this all together, we're gonna have minus three times one, we'll leave that off, and we'll have this unit step function at two. Circle that, we'll check it. That's correct. Okay, one more of these Laplace transform, pretty similar, but a little different. So we're gonna have the inverse Laplace transform, for this part right here, I'm actually going to split this up into two. I can divide the s squared into each of these. So I can actually write this as minus four over s and minus three over s squared. And then we'll have this e to the minus six s. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll go and look at this coefficient. So we're going to say our c value needs to be six. And then this here is clearly a function in s. So this is going to be our unit step function case. So we're saying this over here is going to be our f of s. So we just kind of need to work this in reverse. And what you'll find for an f of t value, this is just, I think, our first problem, which is the Laplace of t to the n. So this is going to be 
the first expression is going to be minus 4, which is like the Laplace transform of, of minus 4 is 4 over s. And then, and then for this piece, this piece is going to be minus 3t. That's just because the Laplace transform of t is 1 over s squared. But now for our inverse, going back this way, we don't want f of t. We want f of t minus c. So for f of t minus c, where c is 6, we want f of t minus 6. This is going to be minus 4. Using this minus 4, minus 3, plug in t minus 6. And let me reduce that. We're going to have minus 4, distributing into minus 3t. And then distributing this is going to give me plus 18. Putting that all together, that's going to be 14 minus 3t. And so for my solution to this thing, we're going to have 14 minus 3t. And this is going to be multiplied by the unit step function at 6. Check the answer. It's this one, but in a different order. Let's check it. And that's it. Nice, I got 10 right. Wow, almost 32 minutes. Check it out. I had to skip 95 problems to get to the ones I wanted. <laughs> so I went through 105 and I skipped 95. All right. Okay, anyway, that's enough problems for today. We'll stop it there. I'm pretty tired. 10 was a lot. So thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.